Welcome back, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury 3 with another exhibition match. This time it's going to be El Torero vs. Drone. Oh, in this game he was known as Blitz Tank, but El Torero vs. Drone. Unravaged. And I know I mentioned last time that Ravage is a very StarCrafty map. Yeah, I feel kind of silly because it actually is a StarCraft map. Zelnaga Caverns, to be precise. I... Yeah, I honestly didn't really play much of StarCraft 2 after the beta. I found the game design. There's something with the game design that kind of rubbed me the wrong way compared to Brood War. So, yeah, that... I I forgot about this map. I only remembered it because there was an April Fool's joke with Starbo that ended up using the StarCraft 2 maps, and I noticed it and I thought, wait a sec, that's Ravaged! And I felt like a complete fool because I think someone actually pointed that out to me a few months ago. Anyway, El Torero going for Cloaky Bots, Blitz Tank going for Jump Bots, and one of the things I like about this map in 0k in a way, it's not really built for 0k because of the fact that cliffs mean a lot more in StarCraft than they do in 0k. Like in StarCraft, cliffs are... They are the BL end all of terrain. In 0k, they're a speed bump for half the factories. Cliffs like this, speed bump for only jump bots and spiders, but still, speed bump nonetheless. And... It actually is kind of nice though, because it does mean that there's stuff you can do with pretty much every factory on this map, except maybe Amphib, and even then, you could argue to go around the map itself. But there's something you can basically do with every factory in this map, which is very nice. I mean, I've seen pretty much every factory work on this map. Not every matchup, necessarily, but every factory, which is a really neat thing to see. Anyway, Bliss Tank is sending out a Pyro over to the south side. Okay. El Torero, I don't know if he's aware of this. He needs to be building up something to deal with this. He is aware of this. He knows what's going on. He is He's sending some Glaze back. Probably, okay, he has a Tick. Perfect. He's a Tick there. That is going to deal with it. The other thing to do, you could build a couple Lotuses, and that'll deal with the Pyro as well. And the Tick is moving into position to deal with that Pyro. And there it goes. The Pyro is EMP'd for 15 seconds. The Glaze will take it out. Nice prep by El Torero. I've had that happen to me. <sighs> Sorry. I've had this happen to me before. And for me, it was basically Lotuses that saved my butt. In this case, it's a Tick. But yeah, if you're fighting against Jump, you've got to be careful about the Pyro attack from either the north side if you're in the south base, or the south side if you're in the northeast base. And El Toro was very much prepared. Anyway, he is pushing out to the center again. Another Pyro is coming along, but it looks like this Pyro is more focused on maintaining a bit of map control. I mean, Drone did use that attack to push himself forward really into the center of the map. Very risky there. I mean, he has these expansions. He just takes his leisure. He has a center as well. While El Toro has taken his save expansion so far, all of his unsafe expansions are still open. He doesn't have the map control to take it right now. Well, Drone easily can do so. He can easily deal with these glaze. El Torero has to really surround this Pyro. Be very careful about this. He can't just attack it. He can't simply attack it, and he's losing glaze in the process to fire. Another tick coming in, however. That should be able to deal with the Pyro with proper positioning. The Pyro actually getting into a Lotus. That's not a good thing to do. Still, it's very much alive. Very much alive, jumping away, and able to escape, repair, or be repaired, and fight another day. At the same time, though, El Torero does have to worry about more and more pyros coming in. A second pyro has been built, and a third one is on the way. He himself is just continuing to go for glaives. And, there we go, he's setting up his wind generators into the nice overdrive field. Difficult thing to do on this map, just set the wind generators around all four mexes, because there's a lot of wind you can get. I think this 1.3 is actually the minimum on this map for wind generators here. Drone, interestingly, going for Solar Collectors. I'm a little bit surprised there. So El Torero is going to have a slight energy advantage for cost. Though, it, they're even right now, and El Torero loses a Pyro. How oh, did I miss that? Loses a Pyro in the north, especially if you go over the Commanders, and well, Drone has not upgraded his Commander. El Torero has not upgraded his Commander either. Both players are going for Recon Com with no particular bonuses right now. No particular weapons or anything. And El Torero, another fight breaking out here. El Torero is going to lose a Glaive or two. Not able to do too much to these Pyros. The other Pyro has been damaged, and this Freaker is not repairing it. It's just going to build, so this Pyro is still vulnerable. It's still going to be hit, still going to be killed. And it looks like N El Torero is, well, getting rid of this Freaker. Stopping this expansion. Nice catch there. However, at the same time, he has to retreat a bit, and Drone is... Okay, going into the center of the map, just reclaiming, apparently, this, these mushrooms here. Not sure that's what I don't think he is, but he is cleverly using the center hole in the map to 
get his commander around because they are amphibious and can jump when the recon comes. Nice block on that tick. However, one of the pyros still stunned. The other pyro able to damage it, but that first pyro goes down. Glaives get the shots off. That was definitely worth it. Nice use of a tick, even though it got it got sniped, but that pyro was close enough. And El Torero establishing along the east side of the map. So at this point, El Torero really is not taking enough of the map. Drone has the center. Both players are about even economically, but it's a matter of time for Drone to take the center and really have it under his control. Losing, or at least getting another, another stunned Pyro. The Glaive's not coming in to deal with it, though. I think El Torero may not be aware of this. Well, he is, but... Oh, no, it's not in time. That, that won't work. Another tick is coming in, though. And... Zeus's are being built as well. There will be built soon to deal with the Pyros. That is a good choice for a small number of Pyros. Once you get to a large number of Pyros, it isn't, but a small number of Pyros definitely is. And a placeholder coming up for Drone to deal with his number of Glaives. Hold them in place and then kill them all with a Pyro when they can't do anything. So what it does best... Oh, and a Pyro did go for a raid, successfully got rid of a melee Stratcher, so El Torero is still taking some damage. Another Pyro going for a raid here. At the same time, Glaive's coming over to the west. Pyro going down here for another raid, getting get rid of another metal extractor. The Glaives trying to do what they can, but not able to do much. Blistang's commander, or sorry, Drone's commander's in the way. Pyro able to raid out this this Lotus and can go over Drone's commander once it's a downtime, because this is not downtime. This is a very nice raid by Drone. And another Pyro coming in here, really ripping apart El Torero's economy. Doing a number on that. The Glaive, sorry, the Zeus here. Trying to do what he can. Gonna get rid of this Lotus. Not before it gets rid of another, uh, yet another Glaive, but even with that, Placeholder stopping a bunch of Glaives, but not much support. Blistank's commander is there. Light Particle being and Repair and Targeting, so pretty standard nowadays, actually, is what people are going for. Repair, Targeting, and a weapon. Counter Raid by El Torero, working out very nicely. The Pyro doing what he can to stop the Glaives, but the Glaives able to get in and tear apart everything here. They... They could go... Well, okay, can't easily go up. This Lotus is in the way. El Torero now aware of that Lotus. He knows what he's up against, and he knows he should be retreating, or at least going along a different angle. But these Glaives are doomed. They're getting cut off. This Pyro is going to stop them from retreating. The Glaives are going to do what they can to stop that Pyro, but it's not going to work out. At the same time, El Torero's commander going along the south side, and his commander, Particle Beam Repair and Targeting, building a Lotus on top of El Torero's... Okay, El Torero building a Lotus on Drone's base. That, I think... That will get rid of this Metal Extractor. Going for defense attack, and another placeholder, but no support to help it out. And the Lotus is up in place, is trying to get rid of this placeholder, not really working out. And the placeholder not able to grab El Torero's, well, actually, trying to grab El Torero's commander in the air and fail to do so. Pyro doing what it can against the Lotus, and it's actually going to be able to defeat it, but El Torero's commander able to get quite a few shots off in the process, getting to level 3. At the same time, Zeus is coming in here to get rid of Blitz Tanks, or Drones. Blitz Tank being Drone, same person. Changing names is a common thing to do in Zerkate. Anyway, El Torero, very nice raid with his commander. I don't think I've seen a commander raid ever, and... A bunch of advanced targeting systems into the water. Nice move there. Unfortunately, water does not... Oh, no, water does put a fire in Zerkate. The interaction between water and fire in Zerkate is a curious one, I found. However, very clever jump there. Getting into the water to heal up, get rid of the fire, and... Be able to jump back in. So at this point, Drone has El Torero's commander right at the backside of his base, ready to deal with him. He does have a lot of pyros, and while Drone has been losing a lot of center map control, and El Torero has been taking a lot of it, the pyros coming in here don't have any direct counters. One Zeus pretty much per pyros was needed. More ticks would be useful, and I personally would go for rogues, but Zeus's in large enough numbers work just fine. At this point, El Torero does have an economic advantage, and he's going to go in for another raid. He's not quite. He's close. 2,800 health total, 1,800 health right now, but I think he's just going to go for it. Nope, never mind. He's just building a Lotus in place. Partly just distract oh, okay, he's distracting the power. He's not actually doing any good. At the same time, Glaive's continuing to get rid of these Lotuses on the high ground. Nice Lotus play placement by Drone. And Zeus is coming here. This is what I mean by the numbers. He's, it sort of works, but the Zeus's need to have the numbers. Moderators are actually... By the way, Moderators deal damage, in case you're wondering. They do deal some damage on their on their shots, and they're keeping out of range, too. Or just barely. It, let's see, double check. Yeah, they are well out of range. 410 range for the Moderator, 280 range for the Zeus. Power coming to finish it off. Very nice use of placeholder there. And 
At the same time, El Torero is doing a really good job harassing. He's broken the entire center of the map from drones. So the center is pretty open. Rays are coming up on the side just in case the air switch happens. There's a gunship switch. These gunships are careless. They're getting hit by an, a razor in the water. That is just cruel use of the water there. And El Torero continuing to harass around the map. Doesn't know about this radar, and I think he probably should get rid of that. It's a free kill, and it will blind drone somewhat. That's not his only radar, of course, but it is the radar on the west side of the map. Drone, however, is trying to reclaim the center of the map to keep some control over it. But El Torero pushing fairly confidently. Getting more Zeus's in play. Big Zeus Glaive mix. Together, not a bad thing, but the placeholders, the sheer number of placeholders is causing a lot of problems. Lotuses, however, will be a problem for these pyros. In fact, I don't think the pyros are going to get through. And, like I said, careless use of Banshee. The Racer are able to get it. And the pyros cannot attack the Lotuses. The Banshees, however, can, sort of, but they're still going to lose a lot of numbers. Glaives at the same time, getting destroyed by puppies that... Okay, Drone started to build puppies. There was a lot of wreckage as well, so the puppies have tons of time to work with. Banshees are... Sorry, tons of stuff to work with. Banshees are getting damaged by the Lotuses, but not quickly enough. There are just too many Banshees. The Lotus is going down. The Banshee's able to get rid of this east side of the map, and El Torero and Drone once again, even for economy. Actually, El Torero's a little bit behind, but El Torero does have this Lotus in place to start dealing some extra damage. Not quite... No, in range. It could get rid of the melee extractor, but El Torero is not aware that it's there. He needs to get... What he needs to get is radar on the hill. However, too many Lotuses for these Banshees at the southeast side of the map, and that's going to stop that cold. At the same time, we have El Torero... Well... Dealing with puppies, or trying to. Really doesn't have a whole lot of stuff to do with. And, okay, there we go. Not quite radar, but there is still, with the Lotus, enough line of sight that everything is starting to get damaged. These power plants are getting closed up. Not the biggest deal right now, but El Toro, if he did jump in, he'd actually be able to deal a ton of damage. I'm a bit surprised he's not doing so. I think he's more focused on this side of the map. He is, in fact, focused on... Oh, no, he's focused on up here. He is... All of his focus is up here. At the same time, though... We do have a nice placeholder set there, getting a lot of the Zeus's completely out of position. Holding them. Unfortunately, no power was in place to deal with this. Puppies are just now getting in place, but they weren't quite there. The Glaives could come in to deal with this, but I think the Glaives are already... The Glaives are already dead. And the Puppies just finishing off those Zeus's. Not much that can be done there. Zeus is all dead. And El Toro has moved his commander up. He is going for this. Trying to get rid of the factory. Getting rid of that caretaker. Nice shot there. If he gets rid of that jump factor, that's going to be fairly big. The Banshee's trying to do what he can, but it's not... <laughs> well, there's a bit of a rally to the south. Possible rally problem there. At this point, at least. Same time, El Torero... Well, he's taking some damage at the south, but not quite that big. He is, however, going to get rid of the jump jet plant. The jump jet plant is down. El Torero's commander going to try on the gunship plant. Go two for two. And I think he's going to make it. Yeah, he's definitely going to make it. He's got... Getting rid of the Lotus in, just in advance, but this gunship plant doesn't have much hope. At the same time, Drone going for one last-ditch attack. I mean, he does have an economic advantage. That is the thing to bear in mind. He has an economic advantage. He has a Caretaker. He's not got another factory, though, but he has a Caretaker over in this side of the map, which he could use to build a factory fairly quickly. And his own commander is coming down to try to help out, assist in this fight. No puppies in place, though. And since the jump jet factory... And now the gunship plant are down. That was a foregone conclusion, but... Now that drone's base is entirely down, this is going to be a problem. The crane here to set up a couple caretakers and then set up another factory. But drone is really low on power. He's accessing on metal. He's got no production, and all he has, all he can really do is push it all into his commander. And even then, it's not quite enough. So his commander doing what it can. It's going to do a pretty good job, though. He's going to be able to get in fairly well. But this enough Zeus's will be able to stop it. And if that happens, then I think drone's going to call it. And El Toro is taking Drone's pace, reclaiming Drone's base, turning into his own resources. Starting to excess a bit, actually, but he is getting the resources out of that, and from there, he is... Actually, why is his caretaker not in production? These rectors should be building the caretakers so they can build this factory. El Toro is going to start losing a lot of metal pretty soon, but yes, he is getting a caretaker here. Getting a caretaker to reclaim everything, and then another caretaker in the main base just to finish this off. El Toro... Bit of a defensive position, actually. And Drone can rebuild from this. He does have caretakers. He does have... Just needs to build a factory from here. Build a factory. Rebuild from there. If he goes... I don't know. An airstrike might actually work against these Lotuses. 
Because El Toro, he's consolidating with the Lotuses. He's not in a bad spot, given that he also has Drones Base. So it's not he's not consolidating losing position, but he is a bit fragmented. That being said, Drone is just spread too thin. So both players are spread very thin. El Toro really has the advantage here by a wide margin. Especially given his commander just being in this great position. It hasn't quite come up yet, but the fact that Drone has had no production for the last two minutes basically has stopped him. He's just going all or nothing attack here. Move his commander in. It's not going to work out that the, the Zeus's are going to finish him off. The placeholder is trying to do what they can to help with that, but that's all he really has. Placeholder and commander. Did get rid of a couple Lotuses in the process, but El Toro can just waltz down at his leisure. The whole side of the map here, and the Air Factory is being built up. I think it'll be up in time for El Toro's commander to come to it. It won't be able to build any a whole lot. Might be able to build one Shadow or maybe one Phoenix. That's about it. Anything beyond that is going to be impossible. And that... That's pretty much game, I think. El Toro has another Clo another Clogibot factory. Just duplicating his factory, because why not? Basically going for a duplicate base inside of Drone's base. I mean... There's base switch, and this is... That's that's all you can really call this. This is the base steal. You just... You take your opponent's base, and you take your own. He might have been worried about a possible base trade situation, but... That... Is not happening. In fact, Drone's commander has to retreat. The air factory is not even done yet. Another caretaker up to help with that, but... Stinger, halfway done. Air factory, halfway done. Eltaris commander is continuing to move in. Got speed now, and foot on level 4 upgrade is speed, and... Drone's main advantage is the placeholders. I mean, he is taking... he's dealing a lot of damage with that. The fact that there's nothing... an air factory... Well, I don't know why... Eltro didn't build an air factory here, or a gunship plant here, just to get stuff to deal with the placeholders. Probably an air factory for a couple shadows to kill the placeholders, and just finish this. The air factory is done. It is getting shadows. It will need a good... Five shadows to kill off Eltaro's commander, mind you. But Eltaro is expanding at the same time, and at this point, without Reclaim as an economic advantage, two to one. With Reclaim, it's going up to three to one. Eltaro has this game. It's just a matter of him winning. This needs to march down here, tear apart this base, and the thing is that Drone is getting more and more shadows. He has a lot of resources to deal with getting shadows. Like I said, five of them, and Eltaro's commander is down. Sharpshooters, however, are in place. They are going to get rid of the placeholders. Or should be able to. They are missing, however. That's the thing. The placeholders are dodging their shots. But one good shot against a placeholder will... Yeah, 1,500 damage. That will kill it. Placeholders only have 900 health. One good shot is death. And Eltaro's commander taking a lot of damage from the shadows. Another pass will be coming around, but I think... Oh, Eltaro's commander, only two more shots, and that's going to finish him off. Drone's commander coming in the north to f deal with the expansion. At the same time, Eltaro is moving up from his base with the sharpshooters and the Zeus's. Placeholders being used on the Zeus's, not on the sharpshooters. And another shadow. The shadow set coming in here. This is the last set of shadows that's going to be able to do the damage it needs to do. But it's going to do the damage it needs to do. This last shadow, not quite enough. One more shadow is needed. And... That shadow is forthcoming. We're gonna have the last shadow, but Eltaro's commander has his has repairing units, but it's not gonna be enough. His commander is gonna go down to a shadow. That's it. That commander is down. Level four commander that Eltaro basically used to win this game has gone down, but that's too little, too late. Drone. Despite this, he has rebuilt a lot of his stuff, but he, despite getting rid of the commander. He is still way behind. The only the only advantage that gave him is the fact that he doesn't have to worry about the commander waltzing down into his base. But the sharpshooters are concerned enough. Just the fact that they... Oh, unfortunately though, Eltro is running out of power. He needs more power, or at least more wind. The wind needs to pick up a bit. If the wind picks up, his sharpshooters will be fine. Otherwise, their cloaking is running out of energy. And the shadows can finish them off, and the shadows do counter them directly. But... We do have wind, and from there, Drone throws in the towel, realizing he has no map control to work with and nothing to build up from here. Whew, well that was an interesting game. I mean, I was about to say something about how the fact that the water in Ravaged is actually kind of useful, which in Zelnaga Caverns, it, well, isn't because StarCraft 2 doesn't have naval units at all, but also because there's a ton of obstacles in the way, a ton of little doodads and such in the lower section. Not so in Ravaged. 
There's a lot of room for the water to actually be useful. You can even build a ship factory and send ships around the map, but yeah, the commander used like that, very clever. Nice move by El Torero, and that's a good close-off for the stream. So thank you all for watching, everybody, and have a good night.